Well, hey everybody. My name is Bill Keller. I'm a Platinum Executive with Thrive Life. And I'm very excited about this training. This uh, happened at the Leadership uh, Conference in March of 2019 at the corporate headquarters in, of Thrive. And it's about Facebook parties. This is something that I've been very curious about because I know YouTube. I market on YouTube. But I know nothing about marketing on Facebook. And I found this to be a very informative training. And I'm sure that many of you will agree. I know I have many people in my team that are asking about how to do Facebook parties. And I didn't really know. So here you go. This is really great. So <clears throat> grab a pen pencil and paper. Take some notes. It's about an hour long. Then listen to it again. Take some more notes. <laughs> this is... Uh, <clears throat> I'm very sorry that when I first started recording, I got two minutes into the video before I discovered that I hadn't turned my microphone on. So we're going to have to join it in progress. But uh, this is done by Kathy Atwood, who is uh, on the left here, and she is a platinum executive. And her sister, Annie Robinson, on the right is an emerald executive. And one of the things that they said was that, you know, obviously they're very successful, but they were having success with parties, but after they started into the Facebook parties and they actually got their system honed and tweaked to where it's really working, that they're actually having much more success with the Facebook parties than they were with the in-home parties. So, like I said, grab a pencil and paper and let's join them in progress. working that hard. We were. But and we, we knew that we didn't want to anymore. We wanted to be smarter with how we were doing things. And we had heard about Facebook parties and so we're like, oh yeah, we can do this. And we sucked really bad. It was terrible. <laughs> I remember going through my list of friends and I'm like, hey, I'm going to use all my friends. That's where you start, right? You start, you get your consultant start kit and you do your first party. And that's how you start. So I did the same thing. I treated it just like I was a brand new consultant and I was gonna reach out to all my Facebook friends, right? And so we did our first few parties and I got nothing, you at least got something, but I got nothing for my first three parties. And I've heard a lot of other consultants say, well, they don't work for me. And I'm like, but I know people are doing good at these, just because it's not working for me doesn't mean it can't work for me. So that's where we started really fine tuning and brainstorming, like what are other people doing that we're not that's why? And the thing is, you never succeed at your party. Let's say you're a brand new consultant, you go out there and have your first party. Is it an, an amazing success? Not really, because you got to fine tune it, right? And so that's what we did. We realized that there were things that we just had to change. So a two hour party um, on Facebook just does not work. Well, I had one that was three hours because I didn't know to pre download all my videos. So, so I did have bad parties, but we're just going to go through. Our information because we have lots of information for you and we do have time for questions so we'll answer all your questions and help you out at the end okay so <laughs> so why Facebook parties um, hosts are more willing to do Facebook parties than they are doing home parties when you say hey do you want to have a home party they go no <laughs> but if you say hey how about a Facebook party they'll go yeah. So there's less commitment and work for the hosts. Really, they're more open to be able to do it through Facebook. They don't have to have anyone at their home. They don't have to clean their house. They just do it all through Facebook. And I found I'm more open to be able to ask people, hey, do you want to do a Facebook party? I know you purchased, and this is just another way to be able to learn more about the food. And I get yeses way more than I ever had yeses with a home party. So the success is good. And we've always thought you have to taste the food to be committed to the food, right? But hey, we're an online shopping program, so let's just carry on with the rest of it instead of just stopping at, you know, buying it online. And we wanted to be home more with our families. That's why I got into Thrive is because I wanted to be home with my family more but still get that income. And so this is a way that, I mean, just the other night, I did my, I was doing my Facebook party. I just posted some things and then I was down watching a movie with my family. I had my laptop in my lap answering questions. So I was involved doing my business along with being involved with my family. And that's something you could never do in a home party when, and, and so that worked great. We also looked at how much money we were spending traveling and doing all of that. And it became a little bit stressful just to calculate those numbers. And so we thought, that's crazy. We just can't do that again. 
So this year, that was not what our plan was. We were going to change that up. Well, and online is the way people are purchasing. And you don't have to try before you buy anymore. I have a lot of people who want, who see it, learn about it, and they want to buy. And so it is the trend to just do it all online. But we do want to emphasize that you want to treat it as much like a home party as you can. And we're going to go through all those steps with you. So host coaching is the very first thing. Just like your regular home parties host coaching, you want to do host coaching with your host. Now, I like to do it personally. I have tried doing it in a video, so I just lay it all out in the video and I send the video, and that works. It does work, but I really like to hold my hosts accountable, and by talking to them and being personable with them, you're building that relationship just like you would in person. So I still do all of this myself. I found better success by doing it over the phone and going through the points with your host, okay? So the host is more committed to talk to them. For sure they are. Um, so being having an interactive host makes a world of difference in your Facebook parties. I've had a host that does nothing and you'll get nothing. But if you have an interactive host, that makes a huge difference. Um, so make sure they're interacting. That's one of the things, one of the key points I tell them. You have to be interacting and commenting throughout the presentation. You have to be there. And I actually, and I'll get into it, but I actually have the host go live or just do a post if they don't feel comfortable going live right in their event. And that gets them kind of started. And they say, hey, I'm so excited. If they haven't tried the food, because I've had people far away from me, and they've never tried the food. This was all new to them. And um, if they haven't tried it, then I want them to see how excited they are to try it and, and what they're excited to try. And the, and the reasons why they wanted to do a Facebook party. And a lot of my hosts now do go live because they're comfortable with that. But if they're not, then just post something like, oh, I'm so excited about these snackies for my kids. So having that is really important. Um, so holding your host accountable. And you don't want them just hiding in the shadows. You want them there and being involved. And that's one thing I say, I need you to do this. If you want to have a good party, you need to be interactive. So every time I post, you comment. Every time you have something, um, I might post something that you know one of your friends would be liking, you tag them in there. And so they're being involved. And I think that makes a big difference. I also do my host coaching. Just like way back when, when I was doing, I still do home parties too. I'm not saying I don't, but I remember Sherry Brower, and I'll always remember, you call, mail, call. And so I kind of took that, and I still implement it in my calls to my host. So I call them three times before the party, and one time after the party. Well, sometimes more after, but in call number one, it's two weeks before the party. I call to remind them about the event and make sure that date still works for them. And they're starting to um, make their guest list, and I want them to aim for at least about 50 people. I know some people say, don't invite bazillions of people because um, you want it more personal. I've done both where I've had bazillions of people and I've had where the host just had her RSVPs of eight or nine people. And I think that the more you can get it in front of people, sometimes you never know, you don't want to knock someone off, but you don't, I have someone who did not RSVP, come to the party, didn't even say they were going to the party, and they had the biggest purchase. And so you never want to tune anyone out. So invite, and I have the host, do her guest list before I ever add them to the event. So I create the event once I know it's confirmed, and then I have them start to get their guest list of at least 50 people. I tell them, I give them you know, something to aim for. If you could do 50 people, aim for at least 50 people. If you get 25 RSVPs from that, you might get 10 people show, and from that 10 people, you might get five orders. So just being realistic, some people think, oh, I got all these people, but it really doesn't always work out that way. So I also give my host verbiage. I tell them what to say if they don't know what to say. And I just say, hey, like for me, one of my invites, I'll just be like, hey, do you like food? I know you eat food, so I thought you'd be interested in this for your kids. I like them to personalize it. So I give a little space in there so that they can personalize it to that friend. Like, oh, I know your husband is a truck driver, so I thought you'd be interested in this. And so I give them verbiage for that, and they really appreciate that. If they want to do their own thing, they can. Um, and I always have them set a goal. You've got to aim for something. So set a goal of what you want, whether it's a certain amount of people there or a certain amount of orders purchased. Set a goal. But um, they don't even know what they can get until you tell them. So you need to tell them. Um, and then uh, call number two is a week before the event. I give them another phone call. And that is when I, um, I actually add them to the event because I don't want it too soon. Sometimes when people see way too far out, they forget about it. So I add them to the event about one week before the actual party. 
And in that week, that's when they just, they have their guests already because they already did all that pre-work and then they start adding all of their friends into that event. Um, and then I have a little, we'll talk about pre-posts of what we do, but they get added into that event. So I've created the Facebook party, they are in there. I always do them in an event or a group. We'll talk a little bit about why we do that afterwards. Um, and then you invite the host and I always tell them as one of their goals, try and get at least 20 RSVPs. That's easy enough to do, close family and friends, you can fill that 20. So try and get 20 RSVPs, but invite all that you think would be interested. And then have the house go live, like I mentioned. I have her go live in the event, tell her, saying how excited she is, or just do a post. Okay. And then um, host coaching call number three is the day of the party. I like to have um, my hosts send reminders to all of their guests. Everybody gets busy and tends to forget, so they're just that reminder message. They can personally message them um, and remind their guests about the event for that night. Now, I do do pre-posts a week up to the event, just a little teaser, a little video, which we'll talk about, but that kind of gets people a little bit excited because those little teasers build up to the actual party that is on the set date. Um, and then, yeah. And then call number four is the day after the party, which the day after the party is when you really follow up. Sometimes you get nothing from the party, but that follow up is where everything tends to happen. I have again verbiage that I send to my host. She could send it to her guests and I as well will go through the guest list and everybody that said they were going, commented, interacted in any way at that event, I personally message them and I say, hey, I have this all laid out, basically just saying I saw that you were like you're getting to know your guests throughout the party. So I do say, hey, I know you were interested in this or you were asking about this, so you really want to follow up with them and see if they want to order or if they want to host a party. Because some people are like, I just don't have the money. I'm like, that's okay. You can host a party for your friends that you can get the product to. So there's really something for everyone. Um, and then the host is obviously contacting guests as well and, and following up with any outside orders. And then we go to reading the host benefits. Okay, now we're going to create the event. So creating the event is about one week before the party, and at this point though, you have actually committed your host. Okay, so your host knows that this is what she's doing, and she has to participate in every way, because we've committed her to do that. And so we then we, we open the party. And then we also put a beginning date and an end date. So sometimes, like we, we did some where we just had an open date, with, and the minute it was done, it was like deleted, it was gone. And so it made it a little bit difficult for those that were not able to attend it um, right at the time, because then it was gone. So, and just to know, you can get back to it through your notifications, but it's so important to set it at a start date on your party and an end date. We usually leave it open about a week after the party. And so also have uh, personal content. So the personal content, canva.com is a, is a place that you can get some of the assistance to create some of the content that you want. Um, have an attractive cover, cover photo as well. So the cover photo for this event um, is, is gonna be whatever you want it to be, and but be creative. Make it enticing so that the people that are gonna come to it are gonna feel like, whoa, I wanna, go, I wanna see this pantry makeover. And so it's just something that intrigues them and gets them excited about attending. We'll show you some examples in just a minute, sorry. Um, so also um, intriguing uh, description, because in the description you want to tell them what they're going to be seeing, so that they can review that, and if they forget, they just go back, they take a look at it, it has all your links, the link to the party, everything is there. So, and it stays, um, the, the cover page and then the, the um, information is stays at the top. So when we do post, it doesn't disappear, it doesn't go to the bottom, um, it always stays to the top. So. Now, just to give you some ideas, um, we leave it open for about a week because I said we do, we do pre-posts that are kind of teasers that build up to the actual event. Now we have done parties where we'll post an actual piece of our party each day of the week. We found it's best to do the actual party all in one day because I think like a real party, the more you watch, the more you get excited about the food and say, oh, I love the nutrition, oh, and it's convenient, oh, and I don't waste food. So you're building on that excitement, it's better to do that all in one day is what we found. Um, otherwise there's a disconnect. And that disconnect is harder to get them 
wheeled back in because they're excited about the product and then they don't see anything until the next day. So keep them intrigued and excited and then buying. So similar to a party. You're not going to leave and say, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, and same idea. We want to do it all in the one shop. And, but we do do the teasers one day each week because you never know who's going to be going on Facebook. And some people just go on on the weekend. Some people go on just throughout the week. So you're going to catch them at least a couple of times before your event. And the more they get reminded about that event, the better. Also, one more thing. The date that you set the parties, you are in charge. If you say, oh, well, you can do it any time this month, they're going to pick a time and then they may cancel on you or they may not... Um, you know, commit to that. But if you say, these are the times that I work and these are the times, not that you have to say it that way, but you commit to the time that's going to work for you. So you dictate your schedule. You don't let somebody dictate your schedule for you, okay? So that you're on top of it and you are the one that said, oh, these are the days that I work and these are the days that I have parties. They'll be more committed to those dates too because you didn't give them their choice. They will be more dedicated to the date that you give them. So this is an example of a cover sheet, okay, a cover photo. Um, so the ultimate pantry makeover. And then all the links are there. Um, they're not there, but they're actually in the, the below, the information below. But this is just an example of what you can do. And you can do anything that you want. Make it exciting, make it intriguing, and make them want to come. You don't want the name to be too long because in people's phones, they're not going to see the, all, the whole title if you do it too long. You want it short, catchy, and just to get their attention. Like Meals and Minutes Mania or the Pantry Makeover or something just fun. And then here's like to the event. Sorry. Yeah, so that's the description right there. So that description kind of gets them knowing what they're going to be part of and what they're going to see. And don't forget the host link and don't forget your links so that they can always go and that's where they shop. That's where they're going to go back and they're going to go shop. So don't have them searching for it. Have it right there. So it's very convenient for them. And it is really important in the bottom links to put everything. But I never post a catalog. I try not to post prices or anything like that until the very end. You kind of want to, it's not like you're tricking them, but you do want to get them hooked on everything. Because once they know the value and the benefits and all of the information, then the money is not going to be as important to them. So, and that's what I found. So make sure you put in those links that they can go to if you have YouTube or if you have Instagram or whatever it is, post those links so that they can follow or um, keep up with that. Okay, so pre-posts are, are important. And all of this happens before the party happens. Okay, so in about three days, um, you could do it longer if you want, but we figure that about three days is probably pretty good. And they stay interested and intrigued. So have um, all your posts uh, need to be informative. We're going to give you some examples later, um, so you'll be able to see. But but take notes, and then you'll be able to know um, why those posts that we post are the way that they are. You want to give them something. You've got to think about your customers and what they might need, what might be helpful to them. And so that's why the posts, you want them to be having them interact, but then you want it to be helpful for them, not just, hey, this food is awesome. You want to give them something that's more meaty, I guess with your guests because you know that they're there um, is important and the host helps you do that um, it's her friends when she comments people trust her because they're her friends and then we also want her to um, comment on every single post like Kathy said that we post because we want them involved if if they say something their friends will trust them they don't really trust us yet but we're gonna build a relationship with them because we can still do that through this program Okay, so relationships are important because you will get comments and all those comments that pop up, you're going to be answering those, not just with yes, no, yes, no. It's going to be like real answering questions and asking more. So the more questions you ask, the more you're going to find out about them, the more you're going to find out about what they need, and then all of a sudden you've done all of that through comments back and forth. So it makes it really kind of exciting for them because they get more excited and you can actually see it in their posts. People do want to know that you're there and that you care. So so pay attention. So in some of our pre-posts we have um, the Snackies commercial which is great, Snack Smarter. And so we do post that because we want them to be able to see it's fun, it's engaging, and it's entertaining, right? So that's one of our pre-posts and we do that. 
Well, we have so many good tools that Thrive has made for us, so we can use those. A lot of those commercials are awesome, and um, even just posting the banana flyer, but now we're gonna have a new flyer. That new Tulak is amazing. I'd be posting things like that, because it's informative, and it gets them excited. And call to action. We want them to act. And if they act, then, and we'll have posts that we're gonna show you that actually create that engagement, okay? And so the call to action is critical. So we'll, we'll be relating to that, but in one of the posts, so questions always, always, always questions, because that creates um, answers, and that's what we want, okay? We usually do, just along with that, every time we do a post, like she said, with the questions, even if it's a video, I ask a question that they have to watch the video to be able to get to the answer for that. And then I also, yeah, just so you kind of are pulling it out of them, but it gets some communication there. But it all starts with our pre-posts. If we're engaging them there, then we will engage them in the party. So that's, that's the idea, is get engagement there. And some of you will feel like, oh, I'm getting no engagement. Well, then comment on your own post. Because you know what? You can. Why not? And ask your host, say, let's step it up. You know, do you want some results? You have goals. So that's how we get them to you. Okay, so this is one pre-post. Um, we want them to um, engage their notifications because they will get a little alert when a notification is posted. So they're always being informed. So this is critical that you let them know that, that you're gonna be engaging, but this is how you do it. This is the very first post that I always post in my event before I ever do anything else because I, um, I don't want them missing out on anything that's gonna happen. So by posting this, they just know at the beginning of the, of the event that they want to click on that so they don't miss out. Okay, so this is an example of a post, okay? What do you waste the most? I mean, everybody wastes, so they're gonna engage in that. So guests will be commenting, and if they don't, um, chances are you'll get some, because you are trying to get the engagement. Or put, okay, I, I waste mushrooms. And then if you waste mushrooms, they'll go, oh yeah, is that one that you buy every time you go to the grocery store, do you buy mushrooms? So just ask another question, so that it gets them thinking, what do I buy that I throw out that always goes bad in my fridge? So it's creating engagement. Well, and this is an easy one too, because even if you have people who don't like to chat or don't like to communicate, they can do an A, B, C, or D. That's kind of easy. Uh, so a question like this is really good. I just want to mention as well, because I, it came to my mind, but um, one of the very first, after the post of notifications, I always do a video of myself. It could be a live, or it could be a pre-set video that you've recorded. And it's a welcome video from me. I let them, I basically introduce myself to the event. I'm like, hi, I'm so excited to be hosting with whoever the host is. And um, I tell them a little bit about me and about what they're gonna be learning. Because some people have no idea what they're even coming to. But I like to give them a little overview, just welcoming them to the event. And I'm excited for them to be learning about an easier, quicker way to be able to have healthy meals. And so having that little live so they see who their consultant is. And you can do that, like I said, in a live or in a preset video that you just post. So that's really important because then you're starting to build that. They know who you are. They'll recognize you throughout the event. But a welcome video is really important. And we won't be telling you absolutely everything and telling you all of our videos only because there's just no time. But just remember that you want to connect with them on a level that's a friend level. So you need to make that, do whatever it takes to do it. And every single one of you are different. And so you're going to be doing a party different than you do a party. So make sure you start thinking, how do I do this and how am I going to do this to share it with them? So be unique, be yourself, because our presentation may not necessarily work. The order that we're gonna give you will work. It works. But, it does work, but be unique, okay? We're not a Sherry Brower, we're not, we always say that. She's awesome. <laughs> Just because, yeah, sorry, she's so funny, we all know that she, but we won't present like she will. So just remember that, okay? Um, and also, this is just a, a little flashback, but it really saved me um, quite a bit, is when you're creating the event, I know I'm going backwards, but just a little tip, when you're creating the event, let your guests invite guests. Because if you have someone that's like, whoa, this is kind of neat, they start seeing this information, they like it, they can bring their friends too. You don't want to turn anyone away, okay? Just sorry, it came to my mind, and that's true. Okay, so I have a really good tan there. <laughs> that's a weird photo. <laughs> Okay, so this is part
part of getting engagement, okay? And getting a call to action. So during, this is a pre-post, it'll be just before the event, um, that they can actually win some snackies. And um, I really hate chipping those, by the way. Anybody out there? I hate shipping those because it's something I'm giving away. And so it would be nice to have like a little packet that we can ship when they Okay, so <laughs> But anyways, those are just a contest, a little running contest, so we get more interaction and more interest, okay, to our, our Instagram and our newsletter and our YouTube channel. So if we if we create that um, that they could win something, people would love that. So this is just an example. And the more they interact, the more they get chances to win stuff. And you also get more followers. You're going to get them more dedicated to you and following you, which is a little bribery. Always works. Yeah. Okay, so just before um, the event, about five minutes before the event, you're taking roll call. We want to see who's there, and we want to create, like, chiming in and engaging, okay? So we want to know who's there and who's watching, okay? So we, we always welcome our guests, and that's where we're going to do it, too. And then again, in a pre-post as well, sometimes what we'll do is take a picture of yourself with your cell phone, a drink, and maybe some snackies, and be like, I'm all ready for the party, are you? Or just something to that effect that you want to make it personal again, you put your personal face in there, and then you're getting their attention. And it's like, that kind of gets some commenting as well, like, what do you have for your snack ready for the party? And so that's something as well. That we, do. we have to move fast. Okay, sorry, we'll skip a lot. So, so the party, here we go. Okay. Um, so, first of all, um, I go live at the beginning of the party. I always go live because you know when you go live, people will start popping up and you will reach more people. So, this is something that is really easy. Um, I can do it from anywhere, but you go live and you basically say um, just something quick, like I see people chiming in, I'm so excited, and when you see their names pop up, mention them. Say, hi Mary, I'm so glad you're coming to the party. I know that you were mentioning you were excited to see things. and. Then you give them a little overview of what's going to happen at the party. This is starting the party, okay? This is gonna happen, and you're gonna be learning some things, I'm gonna be posting little videos, and I always mention make sure that you um, refresh your page if you happen to not see the next video, because sometimes when people comment on a video, it will screw up the whole order of your videos, because we do a lot of videos. So it will screw things up in the numbers, um, only of, like when you comment, that video gets posted to the top of that event. And then when somebody comes in, they might miss a few videos that are below. So I number each of my videos so that then they're not all over the place. So number one, and I did tell them that in the live. I say just make sure you're watching the videos. I'm numbering them all from one to five or one to however many videos you have. And um, that was thanks to Jenny Tenner. She gave me a really good point on that one because I, again, it's a learning curve. You learn as you do them and then you just tweak and get better as you go. So thank you for that. And so um, I let them know, this is what's gonna happen. I will be posting videos, so thank you for coming, and I hope you all learn. And it's just a little five minute live, it doesn't take very long, but you're getting people's attention in their news feed saying, hey, here we go, that we're gonna start. So um, you thank them for attending, and then I just let them know, I'll, I can take orders through private message, um, and just kind of let them know a little overview of what's gonna happen and how excited you are. Be excited, don't be monotone, be like, okay, this is gonna be so exciting. And so you wanna be excited. <laughs> you need to make it exciting. And live does that because you're, they're actually seeing you, they're seeing your character, they're seeing who you are. And they actually want to be engaged with you because they wanna know where they're gonna buy the food, who they're buying it from. So we want to, to show them who you are. Okay, so don't be afraid of those. We were at first, but hey, we, we did it. Okay. So just move along. Stop talking. We'll just, okay, this is the order in which we do it. So take a screenshot because it's going to disappear. So that is the order. We talk about the first post will be about the, well, the live. And then about the food. Now, you're, what we do is we um, open a lot of pages and we um, just have lots of tabs. Uh, Facebook. So we're uploading plus one, plus two, plus three, plus three. Oh, plus one, plus two, plus three. And then this, this way, you get to actually, um, the minute that it's loaded, because it takes a little bit to load, even though they're about three to five minutes, we try to go really like Half an hour. simple, 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 um, you know, limited posts, because we don't want a 20 minute post. So 
but upload them so that when you need to, when you see the one, and then I just watch it on my phone, and then I see that it's actually almost finished, and then I post the next one, and then I close that window, and then I open and post another one, and close that window, and by doing it that way, they're not waiting. So when they refresh their page, the next one's up, so that they can see it happening, and it's, it's, they're not waiting. We don't want them waiting. Pre-download all of your videos before, because it does take time, and it does take another couple minutes, even after you post it, to come up on Facebook. Okay, we're going to just go quickly through this because we're running out of time. So those are some of the videos that we have pre-done right. about the food. So basically, like a party. We're but, covering everything. Yeah. Okay. okay. And here is like one of our videos. We posted a couple of our videos so you can see what our party videos kind of look like. Help us with this. Yeah. Do you have a Hey, everybody. I'm so excited to share with you a little bit more about our food. Now, in this video, you're going to learn different ways of getting our food and more about our food in general. So it's freeze-dried, and what this is, is I'm going to show you a little flyer. This is our freeze-dried process of how we um, get our food, okay? So we have our produce that's picked at the peak of perfection. So anything picked perfectly ripe has more color, flavor, and nutrition in it. Then it's freeze-dried within a couple hours after picking to lock in all that color, flavor, and nutrients. Then it's put into our cans. What happens is it's put into a big chamber where the temperature drops and like a vacuum, sucks all of the moisture out of the cans and then you're that. left with just our freeze-dried product. And because of this process, we have a 25 year shelf life on our cans. On a can unopened, 25 years is awesome to be able to sit on your shelf that long. Now, our produce actually has more nutrients in it this way, is because it's picked when it's perfectly ripe and freeze-dried within a couple hours, all that nutrients is locked into it. Whereas at the grocery store, produce is picked really green and underripe so that it can travel to the grocery store and last as it travels to the grocery store. And then by the time it gets to the grocery store, it's lost a lot of nutrients because every day after the produce has been picked, it loses nutrients every day. So by the time you bring it home, it's at least a week to two weeks old. And so that is our freeze drying process. Now, because of that process, we don't have to add any salts, sugars, or preservatives. It's GMO-free, hormone-free, and gluten-free options as well. We even have organic options. So it's nice to know that there's no added salts, sugars, or preservatives in our produce. We don't need to do that. And as you can see, right here, here's our strawberries. So I'll just show you as an example. I hope you can read that. The ingredients list is clean and simple, so all there is is strawberries. I think it might be backwards for you, but you can see that if you can't pronounce the item, the ingredients, you really shouldn't be eating them. Now, just to show you the size difference, so this is our family size can, and this is our pantry size can. So our pantry cans are about one third the size of our regular cans. And like I said, 25 year shelf life on a can unopened. After you open the can, it lasts a good year sitting on your shelf. Now, I just want to show you um, also that you can get them in snacky size pouches. Now these pouches are great to just grab and go. We also have individual pouches, which are a little bit smaller, and they're great to just throw into a purse or a backpack or a lunchbox. So really easy. Now, um, and we even have cheese. I love the cheese. Now, just to show a little bit of a difference between freeze-dried and dehydrated, this is a dehydrated item that I have. Now, can you take a guess as to what you think that might be? Now, I'm sure you won't guess what it is because it's kind of crazy, but I opened a can of dehydrated that I had, and this is actually this. Oops, and I <laughs> So, it's cauliflower. Now, cauliflower dehydrated, I'll show you the difference again. So dehydrated versus freeze-dried, this is the difference. With the freeze-dried cauliflower, it's big, beautiful florets. You can eat it dry, just like this. I love eating it dry. Crunchy cauliflower, super sweet. I don't mean to eat and talk at the same time, but I can't resist whenever I have the cauliflower. Now, that just shows you a little difference between the dehydrated and the freeze-dried. I have a little picture here. So, bananas and strawberries that have been dehydrated, Fresh, freeze-dried. Freeze-dried really looks the exact same as the fresh. And it has the, the same, if not more, nutrients in our freeze-dried 
than fresh from the grocery store. I'll tell you more about the nutrients, the nutrient value and all about that in the next video that I'll be posting. So ways of using Thrive, now this is a meal in a jar. This is a whole meal, so you have the meats, the veggies, everything that you need in a cute little meal in a jar. Also at home, I will do this, just in a Tupperware container. This is scrambled eggs, so there's my scrambled eggs, my kale and spinach, my peppers, my onions, all ready to go. I will just add water in here, shake it up, throw it into my pan and just cook it. So really easy and convenient that way. I also love to powder. I will take a bunch of my greens, and as you can see, I just powdered them into just a magic bullet, took all my greens, blended together, and you can throw this into spaghetti sauces, with smoothies, anything that you want to get all of that, the good greens in there. Now, I will show you too, another thing that I like to do, and this is just to either, you can eat it dry, just like I showed you with the cauliflower, or you can refresh it into your everyday cooking. So these are some peas, and all I do is add some water, I just let it sit in a few minutes, and then I will just show you within just a couple minutes, sorry, I wish I could tilt this enough to show you, but I'll show you here. This is peas. Can you see the bright color of those peas? And they're all ready to go. That was perfect. I will leave them a couple minutes, then I will just add butter, and then you have instant peas without having to thaw them. And the freshness is so, it's delicious. So that is just to show a little bit about freeze drying and the process of that and the different size cans that we have and the shelf life. So hope that taught you a little bit about our food and I'm excited to tell you about the nutrient content too. That's in the next video. So watch for more. I'll teach you some more next time. See ya. Okay. In the video, I just want to comment really quick that lifting the food up, people need to be as much like a real party as possible because they're not there, they're watching on their phone. I bring the food up to the camera so they can see. And I try and show them as much as I can that way. So, um, yeah, that's... And there was a question at the top that they need to answer after they watch the video, okay? Okay, and this is one of Annie's videos. Oh, back up. I'm excited that today I'm gonna to be telling you a little bit more about the nutritional value of our freeze-dried food. Now, just to recap what I talked about last time. Remember our food? Going through this process where it's picked at the peak of perfection, then it's flash frozen and freeze dried, then it's put into these food safe enamel tins. All right, so this process is actually a process that helps to keep the nutrients, the fiber nutrients, the very essential nutrients that are required for pro proper body function. We require that, and that's what the deep color and the smell and the taste. You can, just smelling the food is amazing, and that's where it's all uh, reserved and kept. Um, now, it's very interesting to know that at health food stores, sometimes you can buy little tubs of phytonutrients because it's all these essentials that are required for our proper body function, and that's what's lacking, and that's why there's so much disease and problems. So, I love the fact that our food contains that, okay? Now, so, so just let me tell you a story about, um, so this is our peaches and like I said before, you take a look at the ingredient list and it's just strictly peaches. So it makes it really nice. When I was a little girl, we were driving um, with our family through the Okanagan and it was a really, really hot day. And my dad stopped at an orchard and I had been taking a nap. You know when you're in the car and it's hot and you wake up? And my dad handed me this absolutely beautiful peach. I could smell it and it was bright in color and it was warm and I bit into it and it juiced all over the place. Now I've never tasted a peach quite like that, but interesting enough that our peaches are picked at the peak of perfection, just like that. And I'll never forget that story and that's why I love Thrive Food so much because it's been, it's, it's at its very best. So we need that nutrition. Now, the other thing, let me just share with you a few uh, facts about our food. So for instance, our beans, 52% more vitamin C is found in our beans that are freeze-dried versus fresh beans. 
So our peaches have 21 times more vitamin C. So that's pretty amazing, 21 times more. Our blueberries have 40% more calcium in them. Okay. And they stay on the shelf and that doesn't deplete. It stays intact, 40%. Now, spinach has six times more vitamin C and calcium. And did you realize that in four days, you can lose 100% of your vitamin C? Yeah. Now, let me give you a little bit of a challenge. I want you to tell me, in a family can size, um, how many bags of spinach do you think are in there? Answer the question below, and after the video, I will share with you the answer to that. So I'm going to make a green smoothie. I love green smoothies, and I find that they um, really kind of give you a kickstart to the morning. So I've added a little bit of water, and I'm going to be adding some of my greens first. So I'm going to add kale. And I do not measure. I just put it together. Uh, spinach. I want to have my greens in there because it's all the enzymes. Enzymes helps with our digestion, so it can actually reduce um, heartburn and so on because it, it's what we require. I'll put a bit of mangoes. These mangoes are really quite nice. And pineapple. So I, I can put a few more superfoods in there, like chia seeds or maca powder or any superfood that I want. And I, um, but I'm going to make it very basic with freeze-dried items. Also, this is one product that I do like. I can put it in my Mexican dishes and this is a bit of lime. So I'll pop some of that in there. I put a touch of stevia, which is my uh, sweetener of choice. And then I'll throw a little bit of ice in there. It all up so it's going to be a little bit loud. So here is my green smoothie that didn't require any chopping, washing, prepping. So look at this vibrance in color. Okay, very bright, very healthy for us. All right, now let me tell you one more thing um, that's really critical about our food and our product. So the Nutrilock Promise is a 40-step process from the grower all the way to packing to make sure that the quality, flavor, and the benefits of our food are in our food. So this step and process is proprietary to us. And it, there's a little lock at the end of, at the back of each can that shows that this has gone through the neutral lock promise. So that's a, for our customers, it guarantees and reassures them that they're getting a high quality product every time. Okay, so back to the question that I asked. How many bags of spinach are in a family can size? The answer is 11 and a half bags. All right, so stay tuned for more information on the next video. Thank you. So we actually learned about storytelling, so I wanted to throw a story in there because it can relate better to stories. Okay, so just make it short, but pop it in there. Okay, we have a couple other videos, but for a matter of time, we won't be able to play them. But you can even, if you don't feel comfortable in front of the camera, get comfortable. At least do one video of you preparing something, showing the food, talking about the food, at least one video. The rest can even be images, and that's what we've done with some of our other videos. Even just images of the neutral lock when you're talking about it, and you just post it so that you, your voice is just behind the images you want to show. So that's a possibility as well. We're just going to skip through these. But as long as you're touching on the topics that you would at an actual party. So you're talking about hosting because you want more hosts. So you're talking about the food. You're talking about the nutrition, the convenience. Whatever you would at a regular party, you do in this party. And we've done it in small videos. The reason why we've done that is because I don't want to have to get dressed up and prepare food every single time I do a party. So this is a way that it's all pre-recorded. 
You go live at the beginning, so you get dressed up for that. I've even done it with PJ bottoms and then just dressy top, but you can do that with a Facebook party. And so then you just, um, you have everything pre-recorded, you do it once, that takes the time, but after that you can reuse those over and over again, it's heaven. It is, it's really amazing because we save so much time. I mean, time is what we all lack. And so by doing this, you're saving yourself a whole bunch of time. So again, all the different topics of what you want to cover, make sure at the end you say thank you. Do that either in a video or a live again. At the end, the next day after the party, you could go live and say, hey everybody, I just want to thank everyone for their orders and coming and learning with me. So um, thank them, be polite. So just last but not least, just some key points. Yeah, so when we create posts, so this is just summarizing what we've talked about. Ask questions. Make sure that you're showing the food in the video, bringing it up close so that that people see it, and it's like they're right there. Okay. Well, 64% of people who saw video content made it, it intrigued them enough to make a purchase. So if they see it, more than you just talking about it, you actually show them and prepare it so they can see it. I don't do anything like a simple plate, and the reason being, it just takes way too long. Do something that goes really fast. We've actually done roast beef dinner, and I laid it all out, and you just add hot water and put the plates on it, and people love that. Like, oh, really it's it's probably six to six minutes, and we've got a whole roast beef dinner. We actually do that in one of our videos as well. Okay, so short and sweet, purposeful posts, intriguing, informative, get them engaged. Okay, engagement is critical. Not big long paragraphs, but nobody wants to read that. Do it quick and easy. Eye-catching, catch their attention. Create content for your hosts, give them verbiage as much as you can so that their takes, they're saying what you want them to say. So number your posts like we talked about because it's really important that they stay in order. They'll know because when they refresh their page, they may have two that pop up at the same time depending when they, they started because they may have started 10 minutes after. But that's okay, they can still be part of the party. People come late all the time. And at the end, I really like um, to recap everything that they've learned because you know how sometimes people tend to forget and the more times you mention it, they will remember. So I like to recap at the end of the party. Remember you learned about this, about this, about this. And so they get that recap and reminder in their brain as to why they want this food because now they're going to purchase. And you might even want to put your link um, on that that's up there while you're saying thank you and while you're reminding them and summarizing because then they see it and then they make go right to it. It's kind of like a commercial infomercial, right? Where they have it scrolling at the bottom. Well, we can do that too. So. And upload all your videos beforehand. It does take time. I've had at least a half an hour and open them a different tab so when the party's ready to go, you just post, post, post and so much easier and it saves you a lot about the three hour video, three hour party. So make sure that you're yourself, okay? So intriguing, inviting, and in, in making people ask you questions. And try not to be boring, because people don't want to watch something boring. They want to be like intrigued and constantly riveted on what you're telling them. So keep them entertained, too. Okay? And we're good with questions. We just, we don't have much time, but does anybody have any questions for us? How long do you, is the day of the party last? I, we post in the morning to remind them about the party, and from start to finish with our videos, from the live to the time it's done, it's about 40 minutes to an hour. Depending on if you're having a lot of questions, some people stay on later than that, but I, no longer than an hour, nobody wants to stay longer than that. Yes, it is in an event. Um, Kathy has done a group and events, and the group gets pretty large. That can be good, but she's got some negative I, projects. I found that a group, it gets repetitive for those that are in the group, and I don't want to bore people over and over with these same videos. So um, by posting it in the group is nice, because then you can preset all your posts, and you don't really have to be there as much. But in an event, you do need to go in every day, and then the event starts and finishes, and I feel like it's more like a party than in the group. But what I do do afterwards is I take all the people that commented, interacted in any way, I message them and I ask them if they want to be part of my group to stay up to date with any recipes, tips, or sales that happen, and then they do move over to the group so you could save those people. Yes? No, no, you're right. And I do private message each of them. Sometimes they get a notification saying, 
you have a message. If they don't, I mention it in the event. I say, I messaged each one of you, so please check your messages because if we're not Facebook friends, you'll miss it. So I let them know that. Yes? Have these slides been made available for us? These slides? I don't know. Are these slides going to be available? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I have a question about this. You mentioned how like, you do message everyone. You mm -hmm. I have the host do it right away after the event to follow up, and I will do it the day after the party. And I, I give them some time because some people come up afterwards and, and send messages. Sorry, I just didn't. Well, those persons will message you, and then you can interact with them at that point, and you can answer all of their questions. During the party, you don't have to answer all their questions right there. It can be through personal message. Anybody else? Do you message people who didn't interact or didn't go to the events or just were on the guest list but didn't necessarily comment? Yes, you can. You can reach out to them too and just say, I didn't see that you were there. Are you interested? Is there anything that we can help you with? Um, and yeah, you can reach out to them. Usually it's the ones that are going that didn't go. Um, those would be the ones that you would focus on because they did were intrigued at some point. Yeah, I do focus more on the people who did say they were either going, commented, give you a thumbs up, check the thumbs up, or likes, those count too. So that's great. Yeah. yeah. Mine's more of a comment to what she just said, because I just did my, um, Kathy trained um, our team on this about a month ago, and so I've already created all of mine, and I've done a couple of mine. When I first posted, uh, not very many people were already at RSVP, mm -hmm. and so after probably about halfway through to, uh, to, to the event, like, I contacted each of the people and I said, you know, I saw that you haven't RSVP, you know, does this time and date not work for you, blah, 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 whatever. And, like, I got double my numbers RSVP after that because a lot of them said, well, like, I have, my kid has this or that. And I just said, you know, the, the way after I post them all, it will stay live on there, like, the videos will stay running. So you can come in if you want to come in the next day and watch them. You can come in the next day and watch them. And so a lot of people RSVP. Thanks, Leah. That's awesome. And a lot of people are late. That's they don't even respond to you until the last minute. And that's what happened to one of mine, where there was only three people going, and then at the last minute, we I had I had about ten more. So that does happen. So don't freak out because you will still. And, and this is a good opportunity too. If you're training, you know how sometimes you um, you have a new consultant and you say, oh, come with me to this party. I used to take them with me if the host was okay with it. Well, here you can invite your brand new consultant. They can watch this, and they can they can also get great ideas. And there was no extra work for you to train them. They can be training. You could be training them, creating that duplication, and you know there's no extra work for you. So this is another thing going back to the group and the event. Another reason why that I just came to my mind. But when you're inviting people into a group, they have to accept. These customers have to accept being part of the group before they ever ever see anything anything that happens in that group. Whereas when you do it in an event, whether they say they're going or not, because they were added to that event, they will see those posts. So that's to an advantage as well. Whether they like going or not, they're going to see stuff, and so that's kind of nice. <laughs> yes. To Yes, because they were added by the host. They were added into that event. They'll see what happens in that event. We experimented a lot with that. That is heaven. Do you guys offer in-home still, or is it just Facebook person? Go ahead. We both have a different opinion on that, because Kathy does actually let you talk. But I've always, I just don't have a whole lot of time, so I'm exclusive. I want to do exclusive Facebook, and that's kind of what my mindset was, and when we talked about it, she said, well, I'll still do both, but I think well, things are changing a little bit. Since we've changed, I do love doing it at home, I, but the experience and the aha moment that people get when they actually taste the food is something that is, you can't ever get that on Facebook, although the Facebook is heaven. But I have to say, since we've been doing it this way, I go live, and then I do my pre-posts, it's so much easier. And I find that um, since I've been doing it this way, where I go live at the beginning and I post the videos, um, my parties are good. Like I've had um, 
even the first party I did with this way that we just showed you, I had two consultants, nine deliveries, and five parties. From those five parties, four of them were Facebook parties, one was a home party. So which way do you think people want to go? You can see, obviously, it's more on the Facebook parties they want to go. And it was an engaged host. It was really good. But then I've also had a host that do nothing, but I still got a few deliveries and parties from it. So even the crappiest party is worth it. Whereas when you go to a home party and you get a crappy party, it's like, oh, I just took like three hours away from my life and my family to drive, to use all the food, to end up with nothing. If I end up with nothing, I really didn't put in a whole lot of effort to be able to get nothing at a Facebook party. And the one thing that I noticed too is that ever, ever since we started, even with the very, very bad ones that we were doing at the beginning, I still got delivery, uh, one or two or an order here and there. And that was good for not really, you know, for a very bad party. So that's not bad. But it is nice whenever I have someone that asks me about the food, and sometimes they don't want to have people come to their house, but they'll, I'm saying, hey, I've got a Facebook party going. I always have Facebook parties going. And I add them in, and they always end up being a consultant. That interest turns them into more. And so because I always have a way of them to be able to learn about it in a Facebook party, it's heaven. And I've even gotten to the point where I do multiple hosts in one night. So I do a couple parties a month, and I have multiple hosts in one. That's like, yay. Yeah. And you can actually invite um, people that you've talked to that week, um, wherever you were, just say, hey, do you want to attend a Facebook party? And then you really learn a lot. And it was the, there was one that I had invited, never out, and I talked a little bit, invited her, and she was so intrigued. She went on the delivery right away. She said, Silly, I haven't even tried this food. And I said, don't worry, you will. And then I, uh, you know, I just said, hey, what about being a consultant? So that is where it's leading to now. So yes. I always have them ask. They always have to message each person, either call them, message them, text them, let them know that they're adding, because I tell them nobody wants to be added to something that they didn't know what was happening. And I said, you'll get way more engagement. But And I usually try and get them to RSVP. The odd one will, you'll always have the odd host that just adds everybody they want, which, I mean, I'm not gonna tell them, hey, take them off, but um, I usually try and get them to RSVP, but for sure message them and let them know, hey, I've got this party, do you want to come? Are you okay if I to add you? And the majority do say yes, but sometimes they do get added without. But that's the most. Do your host coaching as much yeah. as you can, and that'll alleviate some of that. Do you play games at all, or do you just go strictly with delivery? Or do you have like a favorite party? Yes, you can. And that creates engagement. A lot of people like that. Um, I like to do it basic. So it's when you do these things, when you comment, then you get points, and then we drop. So you can do it however you want. You can play a bingo. You can do all different games. Um, games do work. work. And yes. they do work. They're good. I have tried games, but I kind of like to get to the point where they're learning as they go. But I do say every time you comment, thumbs up, interact in any way, your name goes in a draw for a snackies, and that's good enough because they're so involved. Sometimes they forget about the game because they're really learning, and they're, they're, I just don't want to distract them from that. Thank you. Thank you. So I've got to tell you, I um, I asked Kathy to invite me to one of hers, and I went in and uh, watched the whole thing, and I was enthralled. Uh, you know, you saw those couple videos, and, and there, she did a few more, but one with this uh, roast beef dinner. Pulls out the roast beef, up up to it, adds the water, hot water, out of the potatoes, out of the corn, and like within a few minutes, she shows this amazing meal, and it just I think blows people away. But um, a lot of things I've noticed is is the engagement that they've created. I think I've, I've, I've walked, talked to a lot of you and heard a lot of different things, and you'll know what you're doing in your Facebook parties, but one thing I notice is that they do very well is the host engagement. That host is key. And for me, I kind of watched and I said, well, how, how in the world are you setting it up? I'm not, as you many know, a total social, social media uh, guru. But... But let's just show Facebook real quick. Those of you like me that, that aren't, if you were to go into Facebook, here's my page, go to events, so what, uh, click on events, and then uh, create an event. 
Now, Kathy and, and uh, or Annie, when you create that, how do you make it so that the host can also invite people besides yourself? Now, how does that work at this point? Do you mind just real quickly explaining? In the points when you're creating the event, um, you can add a host under the, you do the description, you name um, the event, and then the description of what the party's about, all of your links, and just below that, there is a little spot where it says add your host, and you can add multiple hosts. When you're doing an event, you can have up to 500 people in one event, but when you add a host, I think it's, yeah, it's 500, when you add a host, it doubles that. So you are limited to the amount of people you can have in an event, but it's rare you're going to get more than a thousand. But there is a spot where it says add a host, and then from that, well, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But when you have that um, spot, then underneath, oh, I wish I would have opened it. Okay. Well, I don't think we'll be able to, but that's okay. create the event so you're adding all the host details and when it'll say invite and you will add the host there it'll say host and you can have multiple hosts but then after that um, you can see oh there yeah right uh, okay it's below that so event name location description of everything that's about the party and what's going to happen start date and end date you want to make sure you put both of those and then as you scroll schedule that's if you want to schedule um, what's going to happen. Like, this post is going to be at this time, this post is at this time. You don't have to do that. I don't do that. You can if you want to. Um, and then, okay, anyone can post. I do do that because when you have interaction and commenting, you're not going to have a, somebody post anything weird. It's actually quite good. And then, um, then keep, can you keep going down? Is there more to that? Okay. Yeah, you'll have to create it. Is it the next page? Okay, it would be on the next screen once you create it. But there is a spot, you'll see it, and it'll say host, you add in your host. And then you can start inviting if you want to personally invite. The thing with multiple hosts is that um, you can see what host invited who. So if you can see a customer that places an order, you can see who invited them, and that's who the order goes to. So it actually works nice, so you can see exactly who invited them. And then there's a list that says who's invited, who accepted, who's going. All of that. You can see all those details. Yeah. How do you know if your host is not your friend? Can you, how do you find your host? How do you find your host? I, I usually try and friend them, but you can add them. I'm pretty sure you can add them even though they're not your friend because I've, I've done it. But when you add them, most of the time when I create the Facebook party, I have to invite them as my friend anyway. So they are your friend before you create the event. Yes, yes. It was just mentioned you should be able to add them with their email, even if they're not your friend. I don't know that much. I'm still learning, so I don't know it all. Yes? I just tell them, look at this. And if you're doing a single, ho like a single host, then I let them pick their heading and they pick all those things. But if it's multiple, I just say, you know what, this is what it is. Whether you like it or not, I'm just kidding. I am nicer than that. But I do, I create it and then I just add those um, hosts in there. And I just tell them, look, you're not the only host to this event. I, I didn't want to have to do a ton of parties. Why do all the work over and over when you can do it all in one shot and all the people can be at that one event you post and you can answer right there. So it's been heaven having multiple hosts. All right, one last hand. Great job, Kathy and Annie. So I'm sure if you have more questions, you can snap them and we'll talk to them. But we will be posting these and, and we're trying to, uh, from our end, find ways to support and take these things and learn from each of you and share it. Uh, with each other. So thank you for sharing your knowledge and your help. It's been fun uh, to see them see so much success. Going to their party was a real cool experience for me. All right, so now our next training.